Hey everybody, Jeff Schneider here, and in today's video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna talk about film scoring. Many of you know I do a lot of composing for film, TV, and advertising, and in today's video, I wanna dig into what I think is the number one secret for writing good music for picture. We're also going to explore a new virtual instrument that I've been checking out. It's called Analog Strings. It's by a company called Output. I um, want to thank them for hooking me up with that, uh, that instrument for today's video. So I'm going to demo that for a bit. I'm also going to break down the chord progression that I showed you at the beginning of this video. So let's jump right into that. The basic chord progression is A minor, then G major, then B minor, then F major. Now, I'm not using those voicings, but I just kind of want to start there with the basic root voicings. Those are the only four chords in this whole piece, by the way. And that gets into the secret that I was alluding to before, that simple is always better, less is always more. My biggest learning from writing music for picture after all these years is you got to write less. I'm one who comes from a jazz background with lots of you know, alteration to chords and inner voices moving all over the place and, you know, just way too much so I've had to dial that back a lot in order to get my stuff to work for picture um, and in this case it just means repeating the same chord progression over and over and over again but adding little variations here and there that are so subtle they're just they're, they're pretty much just felt so you don't actually get distracted by what you're hearing and you're able to focus on the uh, what's happening on screen so to dig further into that chord progression, what the voice the voicings that I'm using primarily are based on these open voicings where I'm playing A minor like this instead of like this. So all I've done really, well, let me put it down here. This is A minor in closed position, and to make it an open position chord, I'm taking that middle note C and bringing it up an octave. So now I have A minor like this. It sounds better, in my opinion. I really do like the open voicings better than the closed voicings, especially when you're writing for strings, which is what um, what I've done in this particular uh, instance. By the way, the only instrument that I used to write the music for the little clip I played at the beginning was analog strings by output. And I'll play the whole the whole thing, the whole piece at the at the end of this video. It's about two minutes long, so I don't want to front load it. But you guys can watch that at the end. And again, it's all analog strings by output. We're going to explore that instrument further in just a bit, but let's uh, let's break down the rest of this chord progression first. So we have A minor in open position. Then we're going to G major in open position. Now we're going to go to B minor in open position. It's the same voicing every time. We've got the third on top. And it sounds simple, but there's a, there's a mood there. And there's also a melody there. That's the other really important thing. I'm always talking about how even when you're not thinking about a melody, there's still a melody. How you voice the chord creates a melody. So if I play it like this, my melody is, which is not that hot of a melody, versus, Now that's much more intriguing and pleasing to the ear, in fact. I think the, the issue with the other melody that I played with this voicing is the, um, that tritone right there is not, not uh, especially pleasing to the ear. It could work in, in uh, some circumstances, but in this particular mood that I'm creating, it's not the right interval. Anyway, um, so we did the open voicings. And to create some variation, a real simple trick that works wonders is the the two one release. I don't know what the actual name is. It's like a, a suspending the, the two or the second and then resolving it down to the one. Um, there's a proper term for it. I just can't think of it right now. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm getting the nine, a.k.a. the two in there and then resolving it down. So it's like a two to one suspension because this is the two and then this is the one. Um, then we do the same thing from G major to resolving down to one. We're going to do the same thing in B minor. Now this chord is sort of the, the money chord, right? Because we've set up this key at the, uh, at the beginning with A minor to G major. Those chords work really well together. Um, you know, you, we could be in A minor or C major for all we know. But then we go to B minor. This chord is a little bit more unusual. This chord functions more like a three chord in the key of G major. But then what we do is we go to F major. We go to F major here, and then we, we think, well, this can't be G major because we're on an F major chord now, so 
we're kind of ambiguous as to what the key center is, and that's what makes it interesting. I'm using that same two to one suspension and release every single time here. Now on piano, it sounds really nice. Uh, it's, it doesn't have the same thickness that strings have, so let's uh, take this opportunity now to jump into analog strings. So here's a quick overview of what analog strings looks like. You've got some different tabs at the top here. Um, main is, is sort of your main parameter screen where you can adjust different things like attack and wetness and whatever more means, and there's a pulse on this particular instrument. But uh, where I usually start is by clicking up in this um, sort of like a search bar almost, and it brings you to this screen where you're able to explore the different sounds that output has to, or that analog strings has to offer. And you can click on these different tags to drill down into different sounds. But let me just play a couple to give you an idea. So, so these are all the sounds that I get when I select the orchestral tag. Uh, let's start with this analog bow sound. Let's hear what that sounds like. Right, so that's like a heavily processed orchestral sound, which is why I like this instrument so much because it gets you out of the really traditional string samples that are out there. And I have some of them and they're great, but after a while, I feel like music is going in all different directions right now, especially with the world of film music. And it's important to have sounds that kind of go away from the norm. So here's the main tab with the analog bow sounds selected. And when you move some of the stuff around, you can hear, especially with the spread, you know, it's going to go much more of a mono approach versus a spread stereo. That noise is kind of nice. You can hear the rhythm in there. It's locked into the, um, the tempo of this piece. Right, so you really can create some interesting moods with these sounds. Um, let's try another one. Butterfly ambience. That's pretty interesting. Let's um, let's hear sunshine. Yeah, so a lot of these have some tempo behind them, which is kind of cool. Let's go to um, one more. Actually, you know what? Let's check out one of the sounds that I used in my piece here. So the main sound that I used was called tape orchestra. Check this out. Really interesting, a lot of stuff going on there. You got multiple samples, different kinds of effects happening, and you can really get into that. I mean, you can customize these to your heart's desire with the compressors and the delays and the reverbs that are included. Um, and then of course, the main tab here does have your basic parameters that really do some nice things to the sound. Get really creative with this. pitch drift in there. I mean, the, the possibilities are really endless here. It's, it's a pretty cool instrument. Uh, let's choose another sound that I used in my piece here. Um, this one's kind of nice. It's got a uh, ticking clock quality to it. I mean, it does all the work for you pretty great um, and then of course there's tons of effects like uh, there's some risers included check this one out
So that's why I was able to compose this whole piece of music only using analog strings because there's just so much versatility within this instrument. Anyway, as you guys can tell, I really like this instrument so much, uh, so many possibilities and, um, and, and places to explore and new sounds to create. So highly recommend you guys check it out. And um, without further ado, I will now shut up and play the rest of the, um, the piece that I wrote. So if you guys have any more questions about film scoring or anything like that, feel free to leave some comments in the, uh, in the comment section below. And also, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I am offering Skype lessons. And if you wanna just support my channel, which is always helpful, I do have a Patreon page and I'll link all that below as well. Um, if you wanna learn more about analog strings, I'll link that down there as well. Ah, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so.